In this video, I want to show you the new crossword generator, which also forms part of the new puzzle generator 2.0. So when you load the crossword generator or you load it from the puzzle generator, you'll be greeted with a screen like this. Now, I know there's a lot of options, but what we're gonna do is go through them in chronological order one by one to help you get to grips and make the most of the software. So the first option we have under puzzle setup is to select our input file. Now, if you use the PowerPoint version of the puzzle generator and you use the export tool and you like using the export tool, you can tick this box here to use the legacy file. And what that will do, that will use the file that you generate when you put your data in here and then you go to the main tab, submit and export, just like you do in a PowerPoint version, this will use that data. However, as we're now outside of PowerPoint, there are now a couple of extra new options that you may prefer to use. So we now support Excel files, open document spreadsheets and text files as well. So if you are wanting to create or import your data in an Excel file or an open document spreadsheet, this is what it would look like. So we have three columns. In the first column, we have our questions. The second column, we have the corresponding answer. And in the third column, we have the title. So how this works is you would put the title where you want the start of the next crossword to be. So at the minute, I've got two crosswords with 15 words each, but you can place these uh, titles wherever you want. So for example, if you wanted to do a crossword with five words and then one with 10 words, and then one with eight words, you can do that. Just make sure you put the title in the correct place. And the final new option that we have is to import from a text file. So how this works is at the start, you put a hash symbol and then the title. And then after this, you put the question followed by this little separator here and then the answer. And again, similar to the Excel file and the open office spreadsheet, you can choose exactly how many questions that you want. And then when you wanna create the next puzzle, then you put in hash again, your title, and then you repeat the process. Now, if you want to download these templates, you can. All you need to do here is next to use legacy file, there's a question mark. Here, you can click to download the text template, the Excel um, sheet, the open um, document spreadsheet, or the export tool, if you prefer to do it the PowerPoint way. So, click close here. Our next option is for our width and our height of our crossword. So this is how many cells wide and how many cells high we want our crossword. You can put any size that you want, but if you um, are creating a small crossword, for example, please bear in mind that if you have any words longer than your uh, crossword size, they will automatically not be included. So when you're compiling your data, make sure you take a note of what your longest word is and that way you can ensure that it's placed in the crossword. Our next option here is for auto size. So what this will do, this will start off with a teeny grid and then as it place, places the words, the grid will expand automatically for you. After this, we have an option for to set our puzzle file name and our solution file name. If you don't put anything in, it will default to puzzle and solution. And this is just the name of our files. 
After this, we have an option to generate crosswords and questions separately. So if what I do, if I quickly choose two random folders here to enable me to um, do a preview for you. So as you can see, by default, we have the crossword and then the questions underneath. But what you can do if you wish is generate these separately. So have one file for the actual crossword grid and another file for the questions. So if I click update, just to show you what that will look like, just select a random folder for the questions. So what that will look like is two files, one with the crossword in and another with your questions in. Our next option is to place our crosswords and questions side by side. So similar to the visual of before, however, if you use this option, then this will be one complete file. So not two separate files with the grid and then the questions, this will be one file. And where this might come in useful is for example, if you want to have multiple crosswords per page, what you could do then is for example, if I just change this to a 20 by 20 grid, and then if I beef up the font size of the titles to 40, and let me do that for the question titles as well. And then if I repeat that and make the question text a bit bigger, so 24, and just increase some of the space in, and I hit update. It's what you can do then, is then you can create a file like this where you have your grid on one side and your questions on another. And obviously the shape and size of this uh, works well if you are wanting to have multiple crossword puzzles per page. So I'll just close that. Our next option here is to not include the questions in our solutions. So by default, we have obviously our puzzle grid and then our questions, and then exactly the same for the solutions. Obviously the numbers are filled in, sorry, the uh, letters are filled in just like here. If we don't want to include um, the questions in the solutions, so that means we'll have the, uh, obviously the normal crossword with no letters in and the questions for the puzzle. And then for the solution, if we just want this grid here and a title, then tick don't include questions in solutions. Our next option off this is to show our title. So by default, um, our title is shown and this is from your input data. However, if you want to hide it, you can just untick that and then it will remove it for you. Now after this is for our question file name. So if we are generating our crosswords and questions separately, we can choose a custom question file name. If you don't, it will default to just question. And after this is our starting sequence number. So by default, it's zero. So that will create puzzle zero, solution zero, question zero if you're using, and then puzzle one, solution one, and so on. You can change this to one or 10 or whatever number that you choose. After this is our attempts. So the default is 10. And in most instances, 10 works perfectly. Uh, to be honest, if it doesn't fit all your words in, in 10 attempts, then it is extremely uh, likely that it won't be able to fit them all in. But do play around with this number to get your ideal results. Now after this is our export format. So obviously we have PNG and JPEG, which are raster formats, and SVG, which is a vector format. So if we are doing a PNG or a JPEG, we have the option to select the width and the height. Now, 
the width and the height probably don't work how you initially imagine them to work. Why that is, is because depending on the crossword, uh, the size of the question text, etc., it's very difficult to get a uniform size. So this works as a minimum. So by having 1024 in the width and 1024 in height, it means the generated file will have a minimum width of this and a minimum height of this. Now, obviously, as you can see by my current grid, it would then mean that my width is 1024 pixels and my height will be significantly more, but maintaining the aspect ratio so we don't get uh, weird shaped crosswords. Now, after this, we can choose where you want to save our puzzles. So let's go and save that in here, puzzles. And then we'll do the same for our solutions. And if you are generating crosswords and questions separately, you can, of course, browse to where you want to save your questions. Now, after this, we have the option if you want to shut down after generation has completed. So if you're creating an absolute ton of crosswords or you're doing it overnight, for example, tick this box and it will shut down the computer when it's finished. A word of warning, though, please do make sure that you save all of your work if you're going to use this feature because it will just shut down and you could lose your data. Now, after this is our generate button, but we don't want to press that yet. Let's move on to our settings. So our first option up the top here is our vertical and horizontal alignment for our numbers. So if I click on this picture here, make it a little bit bigger, you see our numbers at the top here, quite small. What this does is obviously this moves them. So we can move it, for example, across and down. If I update that, you'll see my number is now in a completely random place, but it does give you full control over where you want to place your numbers. And depending obviously on your font and your font size, you may wish to play around with this a little bit. Now, the first thing is obviously they're a little bit small. So let's bump that up to a size 10. That looks a lot better, yet yeah, much better. Uh, again, we can choose a different font if we want and different styling, so bold, italic, or underlined. Let's make them bold. Perfect. And then we have the same options for our letters. So again, we can control the alignment. Obviously, by default, we probably want them in the center. Um, what you may wish to do, and what I tend to do as well, is particularly if you have larger numbers in here, is to move the uh, letters down in the cell. Like so, uh, maybe a little bit too far in this example, but then what that enables you to do is obviously then have rather large font sizes if needed for both the numbers and the letters. And again, you can choose whether to make them bold, italic, or underlined. Now, our next option here is our main title. So if I just put that back on over there, our first option is our padding. So that's the space between um, the title and our grid. You can update that and make it smaller or obviously larger as you wish. Again, change the font, font size, and our styling. And then after this, we have our question titles. So by default, we've got obviously across for across and down for down, but you can type in whatever you like there, obviously translate to a different language, whatever you want, and then that will appear on there. And again, same options here again, we've got for our font, our um, font sizes and our styling. So if I just make them bold, Update preview. 
And then finally here, we have the option for our question text. So that's our text of our questions. Again, tends the font, the sizing, and the styling. Now after this, we have a few more customization options. So we can change our grid line color, our number color, our text color, and fill color. By default, these are all black. But for example, you can choose any color that you wish. For example, let's make our grid gray. And then click update. And you see that our grid is now gray. We can change the color of our numbers. For example, let's make them red. And we've got red numbers now. We can change the color of our text if we want as well. Make that dark gray. Update that. And then lastly here, we have an option for our fill color. So by default, this is black. Let's leave that on that. Uh, but to get that to the display, just wanna go down here and where it says no fill, obviously you wanna tick the fill empty grid with color. And then that will fill our grid with whatever fill color that we choose. For example, this one black, like so. Our next option here is obviously our gap between our puzzles and questions. So this is this gap here. Obviously we can play around with that to get something that we're happy with. So I'll just make that a touch smaller. And you see that's moved up a little bit. And then we can choose, change the gap between our question titles and our questions. So that's here. I'm happy with 50. We can choose our grid line thickness. So that's the grain here. Obviously we can make it a little bit thicker if we want. And then we've got thicker lines there, as you can see. Um, obviously, we've just been through that. So obviously, at the minute, I'm filling the empty grid with color. But again, if you want no fill, make sure no fill is ticked. Now, after this, we have an option for our uppercase grid. That's the default. Or if you want, we can change them all to lowercase letters. And then finally here, we have the option if you want uppercase questions which default is or normal case. So by normal case, what I mean is it will copy the um, case and the formatting that you have in your file. So as you can see here, that's all lowercase. So this will update to all lowercase. But if I had uh, capitals and all that, that would match in there. So once you've got your file and you're happy with how it looks, all you need to do is hit the generate button. Now, obviously, depending on your settings, this can take a little while to complete. But I'm only just doing two quick ones to show you. And now that's complete. So if I go into my puzzle generator folder, if I go back, you can see now I've got my puzzles. with my desired settings. So I've got two puzzles here, one and two. And then the same for my solutions, but this time with the letters in as well. So I hope this quick video helps you get started using the crossword generator. Thank you for watching.